Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Sarah, welcome to the XY Podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. Now, I, I'll get straight to the point. It's, um, <laughs> it's an incredibly bizarre and interesting time we are in right now. Uh, this, Apocalypse. I know, right? Like, <laughs> uh, it's crazy because there's literally a thing on Netflix at the moment called Pandemic. I don't know if you've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I haven't really- seen it. I'm like, I'm so not interested in watching that stuff because I'm like just living in my bubble but yeah (laughs) I know it's so yeah it's interesting to grasp but yeah this you know the coronavirus it's making its way around the globe countries are in lockdown borders are closed and businesses uh, at least in Australia and I'm assuming very much around around the globe are being told to work from home for roles that obviously can accommodate for this so it's yeah and the crazy the craziest thing is that unlike other global events and including world wars this event involves absolutely everybody like Mm -hmm. i'm just trying to wrap my head around that it's just yeah it's incredibly bizarre and the reason i was really keen to have a conversation with you is because i know there's a a lot of advisors in the xy on the xy platform uh and i'm assuming definitely in the wider industry as well who have very much been uh office located they they, they've worked out of an office and they're now looking to fully uh move their team to remote work so questions are flying left right and center i'm getting a lot of emails of people just really wanting to know how can they do this or how can they make sure they're setting their teams up for success? What are the things they need to consider? Where do they, some people just want to know where to even start. So knowing that you are very much an expert in this field, um, you know, the great stuff that you and and the team at Grow My Team are are throwing out into the world. um, There's a lot of value to be shared there. So I thought it would be great to fire some questions your way uh, and get your tips or ideas on uh, things that advisors can be doing to, have a nice smooth transition um, and really maximize the the opportunity to continue high levels of BAU with their team. Um, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it, I was an advisor before and my company was fully remote. So I've kind of been, I'm, I'm in this space now professionally, but I ran an advice firm that was completely remote and it absolutely can be done and it's not something to be afraid of. And it's actually going to open your world up to so many possibilities. And it's very, very exciting. I'm super excited for people because like the whole reason why I even went in to grow my team was because I saw the opportunity for business owners to create more freedom for themselves and their staff. And my life and my lifestyle is honestly amazing. Like I really do have the most amazing lifestyle and I wanted it for other people. Obviously the situation we find ourselves in this moment is like very challenging and fast moving waters and it's difficult, but I kind of say that just to, I guess, put it out there that it's, you know, there's going to be some real gifts in this as well. Absolutely. I I agree. I feel like this is a real pivotal time. And I have a, I have a feeling that a lot of advisors or or businesses have been sort of throwing the idea around of at least either partially remote or going fully remote. Uh, But the fact with everything that's happening with Corona, it's just really amplified that. And so Mm -hmm. I think it's just crept up on everyone a lot quicker than they anticipated. And so there's those kind of looking for temporary solutions, but I feel like this could be the the starting point for people to think about this for the longer term solution as well. So yeah, I'd be really interested to hear, um, from from both a temporary standpoint, but also being able to like do something like this full time and what that yeah. might look like. So, um, I mean, look, I guess I guess I suppose we start at the start. Like, what are the immediate things to consider? Like, if we if we take just looking at the situation right now with with this pandemic and whatnot, um, what sort of comes to mind in in things that people advisors and their team should be considering first and foremost? I think the first thing is to continue on with your finding ways to transition your culture, like your cultural um, rhythms into an online environment. So it's way less difficult than what people think, um, but just nail it down. So if you, if you have, you know, a daily huddle in the morning where you all get together and talk about what you're going to be working on for the day, which is common for some businesses to do something like that, recreate it online. If you have lunch every Wednesday with the team, 
recreate it online, sit around on Wednesday at one o'clock and all have lunch together in front of Zoom or whatever video conferencing technology you want to use. I mean, that we can talk about technology as well, but there's so much, so easy. I think people will often, probably people are more surprised at how ready their businesses already are from a technology standpoint. Um, maybe some people are struggling, but we've been in the cloud for a long time, which essentially means you know, everything is available everywhere anyhow. Um, but I would recommend even if you don't do a daily huddle, that can be a really nice place to start. I don't do it in my business anymore because we've been remote for six years. I've been remote in all my companies for six years, but that can be a really nice place to start, especially if you're going, my team is also all over the world in different time zones. So it doesn't, wouldn't make sense for us to do a daily huddle. But if you're going from a team that was all in the office coming in at eight nine o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, um, just do it 9am everyone jump on for five minutes 10 minutes and just go around and say what are your top three priorities for the day have a cup of coffee together and then get on with the day like that's a really nice way to just connect and do it on zoom look at each other screens on doesn't matter if you're in your pajamas or whatever you want because hey i mean if you don't really need to get up and wear a suit when you're working from home like you really don't so kind of being a little bit more open to that and just your faces and saying hi um, a weekly meeting, you know, I think is great practice um, for business anyway, but doing that, especially now. And once again, like when I'm saying all these things, the FaceTime on camera is just super important and that creates the connection. So those would be the first things I would think about is just establishing some kind of FaceTime rhythms every day and week um, where you actually all get to look at each other. If you do have other little meetings within the company, like maybe the advisors meet once a week or your marketing team meets once a week, like just recreate that into an online meeting where you're using video technology to look at each other. And then the one thing that you may not have, although a lot of businesses do is some form of like chat tool. So Slack is a really common low cost, um, solution that a lot of businesses use. We use Basecamp in all of our companies, which is workflow and project management, but also has a chat function. Honestly, like WhatsApp, you can just set up a WhatsApp group for everybody in the, in the team. And you can at least just message there. Um, I think something like that where you can just kind of keep that like chit chat going like the how was your day yesterday and how was last night and how's that thing going with so and so like you keep that banter and that chit chat going and it's it's easier than you would imagine and I think a lot of the time we forget the world we live in like we're on Instagram Facebook WhatsApp Messenger Facebook Messenger all day every day connecting with people all over the world likely if we actually think about it it's no different we just sometimes haven't fully brought that into our business but have more faith and you know at this moment it is a question of faith but it'll be proven to you fairly quickly that all of those relationships and connections carry on if not you know just get stronger and bond like they normally would even when it is over technology yeah absolutely and i'm yeah i'm really glad you brought up the sort of uh, channel for chit chat or communication because that's a huge piece because when you're sitting next to someone in the office, you've got all those off the cuff, like, hey, did I tell mm-hmm. you about this? Or, hey, do you know how I can do this? And it's those really quick questions. And especially for us with our XY team, because we're in Sydney, Wollongong, we've got Gwen in Cebu in the Philippines. It's when you don't have that, um, that face-to-face interaction, you need to be really mindful of higher levels of communication so that everyone is on the same page or you're not missing out on little pieces of information that's going to sort of trip you up or, or, you know, take the project longer to, to, to work through. And yeah, the daily huddle for us has been super powerful. So we jump on every morning for 10 minutes and it's really just two questions. Um, we all sort of take turns one by one and it's, what are you working on today? And is there any barriers or things holding you up? So it's just, want to uh right there and then it's like cool yeah i'm working on this and this but to get this out I, i'm still waiting on this and it's like cool all right who can sort that out for you yep sweet and then basically we're, we're set up for the day so it really eliminates that need for any you know constant questions coming backwards and forwards on 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 the mess whatever messenger service you're using um but yeah just being able to 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 have those off the cuff uh, questions and things and it's actually um interesting yeah like we uh have been sort of uh, sharing some different tools and things that we use with uh people in the community and yeah slack for sure um and yeah we can get into the the the, the tech and things like that but um the the xy platform um we've actually sort of opened up functionality on there for anyone if they would like to use it um 
to yeah have those have those group conversations have those chit chat uh, a space to you can share files or anything like that and it's just a space to be able to keep that that flow of communication mm-hmm. and culture and things like that um because yes not every i have noticed that there are a few teams that because they are face to face all the time they don't have that aside from mm. email or things they actually don't have that channel so we saw that as a way to be able to yeah help them just keep that conversation going whatever that looks like so i'm yeah really glad you brought that up for sure yeah totally another another thing on that that you can do is and i i think it works well is having one kind of group set up in whatever messaging platform you're using that is for like just chit chat like just Mm -hmm. kind of nothing important the the culture the community the vibe that kind of thing and then have your other channel that's more for business stuff and just separating it out can be quite good i mean you'll you'll end up finding depending on how, what technology you use and what you set up, but you'll have like different channels probably to focus discussions around different things, which is kind of naturally evolves. Like trust yourselves a little bit. Don't overthink like, oh my gosh, I need to like get this all perfect right away. Like just get Slack or whatever it is, the XY platform, whatever, and just get going. And as you learn the platform and your own cadence as a team, you'll figure out what you need. So I think a lot of this is like, don't panic too much. You are being forced into it, but what a gift. So is everybody else. So there's quite a lot of leeway. I think everybody's kind of like, well, none of us really know what we're doing. So we don't expect you to be perfect. Um, unlike, you know, when, if you make the decision in a world like I did six years ago to go fully remote, you know, people are watching to see you fail. <laughs> people are watching to see, like, oh, I told you this wouldn't work. And so you feel like a lot more pressure to get it right. And you might be meeting resistance with, maybe clients or maybe staff or, I mean, honestly, I met a lot less than I would have thought, but right now there's no resistance. Like we've got to just do it. So Absolutely. just do your best, dive in um, and let it, ev- trust yourself and your team to let it evolve a little bit over time as well. Yeah, that's great. Now, an area I would like to explore some more is around uh, sort of files and storage and data and security. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I've seen quite a few questions around that space pop up and people are, kind of wondering what what to use or how can they you know <laughs> i was chatting to someone the other day their system that their, their operation is so secure that they actually can't work from home mm. <laughs> because they've got it locked down so well that they don't have the flex to be able to work from home so to advise businesses or advisors in this boat in this sort of position um who still are wanting to move their teams to at least partially or fully remote um what yeah talk me through what they can sort of be considering or start to look at to do that yeah this is an interesting one and it is challenging for people particularly if if you are like very attached to that high level of security um you know i'm have a very entrepreneurial spirit and i'm willing to take you know somewhat of a level of risk and and trust in certain things so i think at the moment, you know, unfortunately there may have to be a little bit of a leap of faith that you're slightly less comfortable with, but assessing like, who are the people that I work with and do I trust them? And I would hope that the answer is yes. I know it is for me. I trust my team, like absolutely. And so what am I really protecting against? You know, I I trust my team to do the right things with the data and with all the information and the files. Um, But yeah, obviously there's the solutions like Dropbox or Google Drive, um, if you're using X-Plan or different softwares like that, I'm honestly not super familiar with all the financial planning software right now. You'd, you'd know more than me, but they all have the ability to store documents and upload and download things and make file notes online and all of that. So it's really just settling on something um, and then doing your best to protect the data as it makes most sense to, to you. Do you know which, uh, like, are you familiar with which sort of um, options or software are more particularly secure than others or like, like, is it sort of like a, there's, I guess there's no one size fits all, but there yeah. are that certain ones provide that might be more favorable. I mean, I love the Google suite, the Google app suite, because you can have different permission levels and you can share documents with certain people and you can have certain documents that are available for view only or edit only. Um, I, I like it. I, I trust it. And I think using good, strong passwords gives you a lot of protection. Um, we use there's software like LastPass is the one that I use in my business now. There's another one called My One Login that we used to use at Wealth Enhancers um, that allow you to 
share passwords with team members, but they can't actually see the password. They can just click and it like automatically logs into the system. But that way, if they ever leave, they never had the password like written down or saved in a, like I would definitely suggest don't use like a Google sheet or a, um, you know, like an online spreadsheet to save passwords because like that could easily be hacked and then you've got everything there in one file. So yeah. using password protection software is probably like the most important thing that you can do. And then you can turn off somebody's access immediately if they need to. Those passport, password protection softwares are also set up with like a lot of security. You know, they kind of force you to be more um, responsible with your passwords because you know we can all get in that habit of like making the same password for everything Mm -hmm. but those technologies kind of encourage you and they tell you how secure your password is and different things like that so create one for you you know yes yes, suggest it's like really 16 characters that's like (laughs) never yeah (laughs) never gonna remember that so you can just yeah (laughs) yeah no that would be yeah that would be good um i guess and in terms of sort of data like uh, this is probably a bit more of a broader question just in general, because I have seen this pop up a few times, not so much about moving to remote work, but just data security in general. Um, Cause some businesses are, have a server uh, in, in, mm. in the company or whatnot. So I feel like that might pose a bit of a barrier. Um, yeah. I think it would pose a huge barrier. And I honestly don't have the answers to that right mm. now. Like I've not been in that position. I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years and I've never had a server in my office. So I, I can't even answer it because it's just not something I ever even went down the path of. I always just had everything on, on cloud servers of whichever product I was using. So maybe, maybe next guest might be like a technology expert could be really helpful. I know that financial advisors are really concerned about it. Um, mm. And I think I always just advise people like you need to try to assess your level of comfortability and then risk mitigation is all we yeah. can do. I mean, we can never a hundred percent, you know, mitigate the risk anyway, like stuff can always happen. And it's just mm-hmm. about like being as responsible as you can and remembering that you have professional indemnity insurance and all of those kinds of things. So provided you are putting appropriate measures in place to do the best you absolutely can, and you're not being um, neglectful as a business owner, you know, you got to just back yourself and keep moving forward because there's a point where we get so caught up in something that uh, it's almost impossible to solve right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, do you, for, do you not push ahead and create something or build something for the fear of yeah you know, that, that kind of trade off? And so, yeah, I guess totally just risk. That's a tough one. Mm, yeah, absolutely. There's no hundred percent answer, but do your best with what you can right now, especially. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm keen to explore some of your favorite uh, bits of tech or tools um, that I guess you guys use in your team or you uh, sort of use with clients and things like that. I know we've got a couple of favorites of ours. Like obviously, Zoom is a winner. Yeah. Um, we use that for daily huddles. Uh, Loom has been a real good uh, addition for us as well uh, in terms of I, – I use Loom to send uh, – little sporadic video emails to advisors in the community or people I'm interacting with just to give that extra layer to emails. But it's also been super handy for instructions. So if I'm giving Gwen or someone in the team a new task, I can share my screen and just go, Hey, can I get you to do X, Y, Z? Here it is. Uh, If you've got any questions, let me know. And nine times out of 10, you know, she's already set up for success to, to go and do that task. So Loom's been a really big helpful one for us. Uh, and also something called Marco Polo. So I don't know if you're familiar with Marco Polo. Yeah, but, I love that. Oh my God. <laughs> with the whole XY team's on Marco Polo. My whole, I've got my whole family onto Marco Polo. It's super handy. It's, I, I sort of say it's as if text messages and Snapchat had a baby. It's like yeah. a video messaging app. So for anyone who's not familiar, it's an app on your phone and I believe you can access it on desktop too if you need, um, but it's a video messaging app. So you can have individual chats, uh, you can have group chats and you can record yourself uh, speaking to ca- speaking to you, your camera and then it will save down the bottom so you can watch it later or just grab it. So for XY, we, that's sort of become our on-demand meeting system. So if someone's got to throw out a question or an idea or wants to float something with the rest of the team, they can put a Marco Polo video up 
And then we can all sort of reply when we have a few spare moments to do so. So that has been super, super helpful for us. Um, but I'm curious to know if there's anything else that's not on my radar that you love or that you guys are using. Yeah, I use all of the softwares that you've recommended as our preferences in those kind of categories as well. Um, Basecamp is far and away like probably my favorite piece of tech that exists in the world. <laughs> like I think it's so fantastic for running companies and I've run our millennial financial planning business on that. I now run Grow My Team on that. I run, we have another business, an Airbnb property management business, League of Extraordinary Women. Like we run all the businesses on their own base camp and it's fantastic. Like there's checklists and workflow, there's notes, there's chatter, like the Slack type messaging, there's mm. a calendar, there's scheduling, there's documents, you can link it to Google Drive. Like it literally does all the things that we need um, but in a really simple way, like it's, it's, and I think their philosophy as a business is like, let's do the least amount of things that people need. Like they're not actually trying to overcomplicate their software. Like a lot of people that do, they're like, let's keep it as simple as possible while it's still effective. And I just really love that. And I've been using Basecamp, um, for many years and they, they're on Basecamp version three now and, you know, it just kind of gets better every time. So I would highly recommend checking that out. I, I know that, Asana and Trello are also super cool. I, I don't use them myself, but yeah, Basecamp is awesome. The other thing I love to do is send voice notes. And I live very gypsy. Like I'm always all over the place. I probably traveled eight months of last year. So I have a very, my team is really global. You know, my team is Romania, Bali, Philippines, Australia, Bolivia. Like they're all over the place. Me in the US, um, got Canadians, like my team's super global. So not only my team though, my life is very global now. So my best friends are all over the place, like whatever. And I just love clients. Everyone's all over the place. Um, I love to send voice notes. So WhatsApp is the obvious and I use WhatsApp. I think if you travel a lot, you tend to get in or you deal with people internationally, you tend to use WhatsApp just because you know, it's this one platform that we can all get on with our phone numbers. Um, but obviously you can just send voice notes on iMessage and stuff as well, or in Facebook messenger. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I'm, I'm deviating a little bit from your question. Sorry, but no, I, go, go. I thought of it because it's, it's such a nice surprise for someone to hear a voice note from you. And especially during this time, like if you're a leader and you have a team at the end of the day, like just jump on and send your one of your team members a voice note. Like, hope you're having a good day. Really appreciate what you did this morning. You really stepped up. I know it's a bit lonely out there, but like I'm thinking of you and I'm really proud of you or something like that. Like, so fucking nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so nice to receive that. And clients will be the same. Like sending them a voice note, like, hey, I'm thinking of you and your fam. You know, it looks like we're all going into lockdown or whatever. Like, just want you to know I'm thinking of you. And you can like, sit well we're probably not going to be sitting in the car but you can sit in your house wherever you are and just chat away to your phone and send voice notes off to people and it's such a nice thing to receive um so i would just throw that out there as something you can do during this time that's like you know if you can't if your schedules don't match up to have that call or that video face to face it's a little bit more than a text message yeah, absolutely. And I think in both respects, like you said, um, with client communication, it's just that extra layer of pers personability and um, just keeping, staying relevant. And especially in this time, like look at the markets and look, just look at what's yeah. happening. And it's, you know, I'm sure plenty of people are, are freaking out, but um, you know, just to give them that reassurance, like this is the time where advisors step into their value. Like not, not that they're not valuable any other time, they're valuable all the time, but times like this, this is where they truly, oh, truly shine. Yeah. So being able to shoot an off the cuff voice message to just, yeah, to a client to just say, Hey, just checking in, uh, you know, everything's all good. I'm keeping a monitor on things like just that. Like to me, I don't think you can ever communicate too much. I mean, you don't want to spam people obviously, but those little thought bombs like there, you know, and I'm sure people have them all the time, but oh, like, taking just... the extra two steps to actually tell that person about it is super powerful critical right now and like a voice note is going to cut through to your clients above and beyond everything else i open my own inbox every day and it's like every business that i have come in contact with is giving me a covid19 update and i'm like mm -hmm. i really don't care that much like it just doesn't like right now like i don't want to read all these different businesses updates to what they're doing like mm -hmm. we're all living it it's everywhere it's the last thing we need whereas if someone that i'm working with like a financial advisor sends me a voice note 
to say, hey, how you doing? You might be feeling nervous about the markets or I just want to remind you, like, this is what I'm here for and these are the times when we don't panic. And I, I mean, I lived through, I was an advisor in 2008. I lived mm-hmm. through the GFC. I held the hands of all of my clients, had about 100 clients and it was like, we just walked that path together and we're seeing the exact same thing. And I remember the headlines back then, blood on the streets at Wall Street and this is the worst thing we've ever seen and we'll never recover and it's all the same messaging and what a gift it is for me to be sitting here going I mean I'm not an advisor anymore I'm not dealing with clients but obviously I have a lot of friends that ask me about markets and money and things like that and I you know I have that messaging and I can go back to that time that I lived through and say like yeah this is a unique crazy weird thing just like the GFC was just like everything that's ever happened because actually as humans we learn and we grow and we don't repeat the same mistakes. So often these huge catastrophes catastrophes are the first time they've ever happened and then they probably might not happen again, which is fantastic. Um, but to be able to cut through the noise and, you know, not necessarily just send out the email newsletter, like I would encourage people right now. And I'm kind of thinking as I'm speaking to like, no, I love this. I think I know where you're going. Like, <laughs> don't just tow the like professional by the book line, like be different, stand out, make connection. Like people, this whole entire world right now, we've just hit the reset button. Like boom, everything stops. We have a chance to look at how we've been living at how we're, how everything in our world and society is operating and make changes. Like every single one of us is sitting right now, listening to this with every plan they ever had gone. Like my calendar's clear for the first time that I can ever remember. My calendar's clear. I get to think. And so tap into that human side and and use that to connect with people. Don't just go down the path of like, you know, what you would learn at, you know, marketing and comms degree. Like, oh, we're in a crisis. Let's send out the crisis email and let's do this. Like there is so much of that. People don't need it. What people want to know is like, I don't know, send them a funny meme about it or whatever's (laughs) you, whatever your personality is of you and your business, like tap into that and be that, show up like that and use this as an opportunity to take off the suit and take off that professional side and merge. All of us right now are experiencing a merge between our, like life is just one big blob right now. Like we're at home, people have got the kids, we've got to try to work, we've got to manage everything, everything's in a big melting pot right now so just be that and like it's refreshing totally and and we are all in that melting pot together so everyone (laughs) liz uh liz hughes uh advisor just posted into the platform yesterday around uh how is she going to manage with uh, she's now looking to go work from home um she's got to do zoom calls and she's like and i have a crazy four-year-old who just won't not, will not leave me alone. And so all the comments and sentiment that came through around, Hey, it's life. Your clients are going to yeah. understand like they get it. Like if, you know, and she shared a couple of good, funny little stories and, and that's it. Like, you know, it, it don't have to have this, uh, this mask or this filter and be 10,000% professional all the time. It's like, Hey, we're people too. Like uh, advisors are humans as well. Like just we're be all, your natural self. Yep. Be authentic because that's why your clients joined and signed up in the first place, right? They, they, they're, they're buying into that vibe and the culture of you and your team and let that shine through 100%. That's, um, oh, yeah, I, really I mean, that. one of the most freeing things in my entire life was when I stopped wearing corporate clothes and thinking that that was what made people take me seriously and realize like I'm the same woman no matter what I'm wearing. If I'm sitting, giving someone advice about their money in my yoga gear, because I've just been to a yoga class, it doesn't change anything, you know? And this is a time for other people to experience that freedom and liberation that I've found for myself by just being me, you know, where I am, how I am on that day and just showing up because my brains and intellect and my emotional intelligence and my life experiences and everything I've studied and experienced and learned that I'm bringing doesn't matter what I look like or what room I'm sitting in. Like it just, it is. And it goes against a lot of what we were told. Like, oh, first impressions count and you got to look a certain way and blah, blah, blah. But the world is changing and this is humanizing us and it's so beautiful. It is, isn't it? Now, I, I, I was actually really curious. So just to go back to your team being so global, how does that work uh, in with everyone being in different time zones? Like obviously it's 
not the standard nine to five kind of mm-hmm. uh, roster or, or whatnot. But in terms of communication, like people are half a day behind each other. Like how do you keep the flow and communication uh, succinct when everyone is so spread out? Oh, this is the juicy stuff that I love. Like I'm super unconventional now because I just let it be whatever it needs to be. And I mean, I've been in this for a while and I just let go of the reins. Like I just don't have that grip on things that I used to in terms of like, I've got a grip on what's going on in my life. Like I know what's happening, but I don't have that like tightness where I have to control and maneuver and manipulate everything and make sure it's exactly how I need it to be. Like I have just allowed my team to step into their power and to be who they are. And what I would pose to us all listening is it actually doesn't make any logical sense to get the 10 people that work for you to all come into the office at 8.30 a.m. and be productive for eight hours in a row. Those 10 people are different. Some of them have their highest productivity at 11 p.m. at night. Some of them wake up like me early, like 4.35 in the morning. My most productive hours are like between like 5 and 8 a.m. and I can crush it during those hours. And other people like to work straight through. Other people like to do like a couple of hours here, then go to something else, a couple of hours there. Like this is an opportunity to potentially, if you're like brave enough to step into allowing people to explore how and what works best for them for their own rhythms. And I look at it now and I think how insane, like I was missing the most productive hours of a lot of people's days because I had this false idea and belief system that, you know, I needed to be able to see them and I needed to be there between nine and five and I need to watch them and make sure they're being productive. Like, no, I was missing the productivity of some of those people. So I'm very like, do your thing. And I just look at the outcomes. As long as we're getting the work, like whatever's, whatever's that person's responsibility is and their areas of the the business that they look after, as long as we're moving and it's all being done, then we're good. And if we're not, we just have really transparent conversations about it. But we've, we've come a long way. And I obviously understand that, my perspective is like six years down the track, but I say it to you because once again, it's a beautiful gift to see what your team are actually made of. Like when they can't just turn around and let you hold their hand all day long of how to get their job done, they have to dig deep into themselves and start to really find their power and find what they can do and encourage them, like really encourage them to step up. I let my team, they own what they own. So my marketing manager, Theodora, she owns our brand. She rebranded our company and presented it to me at the same time as all the team. I hadn't seen it any more than anybody else, like, because that's her baby. And that's what I hired to do. And I trust her joy. She's the head of recruitment. She does the recruitment thing. I don't know anything about recruitment. Actually, I was a financial advisor. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't even have a, a, like an option. Like I, if I get in there and try to see what you're doing, I'll just be like, Oh, this is fascinating. Like, you know, it's not my thing. So I have to just let her do it. But that's really how I've sort of moved toward running the company over the last five, six years is like just letting people be and do them and, and trusting them to live in the best expression of themselves. And that goes down to like their lifestyle and their working. And you know, people, I can, I can feel that people be like, Oh my gosh, if you just give people that free reign, they'll just like do whatever they want. They'll watch TV all day. And I'm like, here to tell you that that is not what people want, you know, especially millennials. But I think everyone really, we want to show up and we want to make a difference and we want to like make an impact and we want to be praised for the work that we're doing. And we want to like, we absolutely want to shine. Like nobody really gets up and thinks, Oh, I hope I can get paid to do nothing all day. I just want to sit on the couch. Like it's, it's a falsity. There's very few people that actually think like that. People want to impress you and, impress the clients and show you what they're made of and like give them that platform to do it. So I just let my team, my team go. We have our one weekly meeting. That's the only thing that we, cause we are in different time zones. We can't do that daily huddle. We have our one, it's a one hour team meeting and it is, we, we, we rotate the time every sort of three months so that whoever's staying up late, you know, they only have to do it for three months and then it'll shift and you know, all of that kind of thing. Right now I'm, I'm the one having to get up early for the meeting. Other people are up late. Some people in the middle of the day, but we move it. But that's the one thing for, for the full flexibility and freedom. The only thing I ask is that 60 minutes of the week we're on. And I mean, people really want this level of flexibility. People really want 
And it's a gift to be able to live life and integrate the different parts of their life and be trusted to do a good job at the same time. I mean, that the trends are telling us 68% of millennials want that. And 90% of those who work flexibly and remotely never, ever want to go back. Those numbers are, it's a freight train of a trend. Like it's not like a little side thing. Like this is the future and we're being thrust into it right now. Um, but yeah, trusting your team and maybe it's a little bit of an experiment to just see what you're all made of. Totally. I mean, I guess it's very empowering too, you know, to giving someone that opportunity to step up and show up and be part of something bigger than just themselves, than just showing up for the paycheck. Because yeah, you said, like, I think you alluded to before, like incentives, money and, and incentives like that aren't the driver anymore. People don't no. respond to that. It's, it's, it's not, it's not uh, fueling enough for them to do that. And even if it is an experiment to do so, if you, you know, the, the chance of having the, the couch potato who really doesn't want to do anything like it, it's, it's all performance based. So if the outcomes aren't being achieved, you'll find out pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You will be able to, you know, weed those people out pretty, pretty quick. So I feel like, yeah. And, and with the level of accessible tech we have now mm. coupled with this sort of pivotal shift um, of what's happening right now. I think this is a really, really fantastic opportunity for people to dip their toe in, give it a tr- crack with their teams. And like you said before, we're all in the same boat. So there's no pressure if you fail or if it doesn't quite work because at least you're trying and you're still yeah. you know, moving forward to continue to deliver great outcomes for clients, stay in touch with clients, keep that communication strong, um, and continue to, to, to thrive and build that sustainable business. So I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. One of the biggest things that happens is uh, on the theme of outcomes based work is you very quickly see who's not performing and we delude ourselves when we're in an office. Cause we're like, well, they're sitting there for like eight hours a day. So they must be doing something. But when you take that, like that filter off, it's just, it becomes even more black and white. Like, Oh, the thing just didn't get done again. Or, you know, the response rate's not there that we need it to be or whatever it might be. And you just like, wow. And you start to have a little more um, real conversations with yourself as a leader and be like, you know what, it's time to set this person free so they can go on and find, you know, what is more suited to them and we can find someone who's more suited to us. And it happens really fast. So there's also a gift in that. Not that we want to be letting people go at this time or anything like that, but Many of us as business owners, we do have people in our team that if we really listen to our heart and our intuition, we know are not the right fit. We know they're not thriving. And it's also a gift to like free them to go and go and do what's going to work better for them and get the business back on track with someone who's really aligned and really passionate. Um, Talking about leadership, I'm just thinking like also something that I would kind of suggest to people right now is it's really a time to shine like as a leader and to be a beacon of light or a beacon of hope in the lives of your team members. Like I don't have a TV. I don't watch any of the news or anything like that. Um, But I know that it's everywhere out there. Like, you know, you can't turn around without talking about this virus, but people's, what we do every day, like showing up for our clients for this greater purpose of whatever our business is like engage your team in that. And that gives them something to think about, to work on, to be a part of while we're living through this very strange moment in time. And I think I've just been checking in with my team, with my voice notes or getting on a call with them or sending them individual notes as well, just to be like, how are you coping? Like, and just coaching them on like, be careful with who you're spending time with and who you're having conversations with and what you're consuming when it comes to social media and the news, because you know, you are at home, you are probably a lot more isolated than normal. Like be very mindful of your energy and the rabbit hole you can go down um, if you get too consumed in those mass messaging and like be the person in the team as the leader that like shines the light and be the beacon of hope and keep talking about your passion and your purpose and your values as a business and your clients and all the good work you're doing and resist being just another source of panic and fear that's engulfing the world right now. Totally. There's plenty of that uh, already. And it's really, you know, uh, I think of advisors, you know, that's really easy for them to get stuck in a bubble and hard to block out all the negative media 
press about the industry itself. So this is just mm-hmm. another extension of that. So it's, yeah, it, what you're consuming and what you're taking in, like being very mindful of that and, and keeping that glass half full approach and keeping focused and on, on track and, and yeah, instilling that within the team is very, very important. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. It was a great conversation. I got a lot out of all of that. Um, so just to, I guess, close out and, and wrap up on that communication is key, right? Like if you're going to go remote and virtual, having the right channels or systems in place to have great levels of communication will just really help in maintaining BAU, right? You would agree? Yep, absolutely. And then leverage tech. Uh, There's so many free applications out there. Try, experiment, and know that you're not going to be punished if it doesn't work uh, because everyone's in the same boat right now. And be, yeah, be, be, give it a crack. I mean, what what, what have you got to lose really? Um, And yeah, I mean, do you have any other final sort of bits, bits of, you know, advice or words or anything to finish on? I think we covered quite a fair bit. I think we did. I mean, in the, in the States, we're um, pretty much locked in our homes now. So just if you, if, and when it gets to that point for you guys out there in Australia, like I just went and did some gardening and it was a really nice little break from all of the stuff and even from business and everything and just like get my hands dirty, get in the sun, get back to nature. Like there's, there's something really beautiful about this time to just slow down a little bit as well. But, but believe in yourself, believe in why this is happening, believe in your team, uh, believe in your client's ability to be there with you by your side as you do it as well. Because I think in so many ways, and I know and fully appreciate and have compassion for, you know, some of us will be suffering in terms of cash flow and all sorts of things in our businesses. And it is a really difficult time, but there is some real blessings happening right now as well. Absolutely. And yeah, any, feel free. Anyone can reach out. Um, if anyone wanted to get in touch with you to say hello, have any questions, anything like that, where's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, I, I actually sent out an email the other day. I was like, send me a WhatsApp voice note if you like, plus one four two four three eight six two one seven zero. Like, I don't mind if people want to chat. I'll like, I'm happy to, you know, give some advice or send some some good vibes back. But yeah, grab me on Instagram or you can either follow me at Sarah Regalhuth or the company at Grow My Team, and we're all happy to help and do our best. Um, we've got an essential emergency remote working guide that we put up the other day. So go grab it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll pop any of those links and your number if I can remember that <laughs> <laughs> in the show notes. Well, <laughs> hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I hope enjoy gardening and <laughs> making most I've got of got a fair bit of work to do as have. well, but it is, it is nice to do a it little is. gardening. Thanks, oh, Emily. It was absolutely. so nice to chat. Yeah, likewise. Well, I will we'll catch up soon. Thank you.